Black Inventor creates a robot that can braid hair and save hours. This is impossible. Watch. Imagine if every time you got your hair cut, it took six hours, cost two to three hundred dollars, and gave your hairstylist arthritis at age 29. Damn! Six hours in a salon chair, two hundred dollars out of your pocket, and hands that end up with arthritis by age 29. Oh no. That's what it takes to get your hair braided in America today. <laughs> now that's a little too much. What if I told you that two young black inventors of African descent just changed that forever, and the billion dollar hair industry will never be the same again? This is what it's like to get your hair braided. And I know this firsthand because I've worn braids all my life. And when I braided my own hair for the first time, it took me four days. But I'm not alone because hair braiding is now the most popular hairstyle for 20 million Americans who experience this miserable process every eight weeks. This is the story of how Yinka Ogunbi and David Afalabi built a robot that does something people said was impossible. A machine that can braid human hair just like a professional stylist, and they did it after building 450 prototypes, winning $75,000 at Harvard, and proving that when black innovators get the resources they need, they don't just enter industries, they transform them. And yet braiding hasn't seen innovation since braiding was invented 5,000 years ago. Let me take you back to where this all started. Because understanding this invention means understanding the problem that millions of black women face every single day. Yinka Ogunbi is a biomechanical engineer from a family of Nigerian engineers, and she's worn braids all her life. When she decided to braid her own hair for the first time, it took her four entire days, four days of sitting there, fingers cramping, back aching just to get one hairstyle done, and that's when she realized something that millions already knew but nobody had solved. That's why we're building Halo Braid, the first patent-pending hair braiding robot that saves time for stylists and their clients. Stylists start the braid, Halo finishes it, and we reduce braiding time from hours to minutes making braiding joyful, not painful. Hair braiding is one of the most time-consuming, physically demanding, and expensive beauty processes in the world. Think about it for a second. If every time you needed a haircut it took six hours, cost up to $300, and left your hairstylist with chronic pain that could end their career, you'd call that broken, you'd demand change, you'd expect someone to fix it. But for 20 million Americans who wear braids as their most popular hairstyle, experiencing this miserable process every eight weeks, that's just been the reality, the accepted norm, the way things have always been done. And here's the crazy part. Braiding was invented 5,000 years ago in African culture. It's an ancient art form with deep cultural significance, passed down through generations, but in all those 5,000 years, the actual process hasn't changed, the labor intensity hasn't decreased, the physical toll on stylists hasn't been addressed, and the time commitment hasn't gotten any shorter. Ogunbi looked at this and saw something nobody else saw. An $11 billion opportunity hiding in plain sight disguised as just another thing black women had to deal with. Just another price we pay for wearing our hair the way we want to wear it. So she teamed up with David Afalabi at Harvard Business School, and together these two black innovators of African heritage decided they were going to do what had never been done before. They were going to teach a machine to braid hair. Now, if you think that sounds simple, you're about to find out just how wrong you are. Because what Ogunbi and Afalabi were attempting was something that engineers had considered nearly impossible for decades. Hair is one of the most difficult materials to work with in robotics. It's thin, it's flexible, it moves in unpredictable ways. It has different textures, different thicknesses, different levels of moisture, and you're not just manipulating hair on a table, you're working on a human head, with curves, with movement, with someone who needs to be comfortable for the entire process. Ogombi explained it perfectly. Creating a braid, doing it on a human's head, and doing it with hair is one of the hardest things to work with, and designing a device that actually works has been really tough. How tough? Try 450 prototype iterations tough. That's 450 different versions of the machine, 450 attempts to get it right, 450 times they built something, tested it, watched it fail, learned from that failure, and built again. For 18 months straight, while other Harvard students were networking at fancy events or working on their consulting case studies, Ogunbi and Afalabi were in the lab 
tweaking motors, adjusting angles, programming machine learning algorithms, testing on real human hair, failing and trying again. They didn't have the luxury of giving up. They knew what was at stake, they knew that if they could crack this, they wouldn't just be building a business. They'd be changing the lives of millions of black women and the stylists who serve them. And then it happened. The machine worked, it actually worked, and not just in theory, not just on a test dummy, but on real human hair, on real heads, including Ogon B's own. The Halo Braid robot looks like a cream and gold standing dryer, the kind you'd see in any salon, but inside that familiar looking shell is some of the most advanced machine learning technology you've ever seen. The robot uses artificial intelligence to understand hair texture, to calculate the right tension, to maintain consistent braiding patterns, to work at speeds five times faster than human hands, while matching professional quality every single time. Here's how it works. A stylist starts the braid, getting it going the way they want it, with their artistic touch, their professional eye, their understanding of what their client needs, then the client sits under the halo braid machine, and the robot takes over, finishing the braids in a fraction of the time it would take to do by hand. Stylists start the braid, Halo finishes it, and we reduce braiding time from hours to minutes, making braiding joyful, not painful, and allowing a stylist to grow their business without destroying their hands. Our devices have done thousands of braids and braided full hairstyles like mine for the past year, and we use machine learning to match professional quality, but to do it five times faster. The result? What used to take six hours now takes minutes. What used to cost two to three hundred dollars can be done more affordably, and stylists who used to destroy their hands doing repetitive motion for hours on end can now serve twice or even three times as many clients without the physical pain. Ogon B put it simply, stylists start the braid, Halo finishes it, we reduce braiding time from hours to minutes, making braiding joyful instead of painful, and allowing a stylist to grow their business without destroying their hands. The device has already completed thousands of braids, real braids on real people, and the machine learning gets better with every single one. This isn't some concept, it's not vaporware. It's not a prototype that kind of works in perfect conditions. This is a real product that's been tested in the real world and actually delivers results. When Ogun B and Afalabi pitched Halo Braid at Harvard's 2025 President's Innovation Challenge, they weren't just presenting an idea, they were presenting a fully functional solution to a problem that had existed for literally thousands of years. And the judges at Harvard saw exactly what they were seeing. This wasn't just another tech startup trying to disrupt an industry with an app, this was real innovation. This was engineering meeting culture. This was black inventors solving black problems with black excellence. Halo Braid won the $75,000 grand prize in the alumni and affiliates open track category, beating out hundreds of other ventures from across all 13 Harvard schools. But here's what makes this win even more special. This was Ogun B's second time winning at the President's Innovation Challenge. Back in 2023, she won an Ingenuity Award for early stage startups for this same concept. She took that recognition, that validation, that seed funding, and she turned it into something bigger, something real, something that actually works. That $75,000 isn't just prize money sitting in a bank account. Ogun B and Afa Lobby are using it to open a pilot salon in Boston, where they'll test different braiding styles, refine the technology even further further, work directly with stylists and clients to make sure the product meets real-world needs, and then scale up for wider manufacturing later this year. They've already opened a waitlist on their website at halobraid.com, and the response has been overwhelming. Stylists are lining up to get their hands on this technology because they understand what it means. They understand that this could transform their business, save their hands, increase their income, and make the entire braiding experience better for everyone involved. Finding salons and stylists hasn't been a problem, Ogan B explained, because this is so meaningful to them and the idea of braiding in half the time, let alone minutes, is groundbreaking. Now, let's talk about why it matters that this invention was created by black people of African origin origin, because that's not just a demographic detail, that's the entire point. For too long, the beauty industry has ignored black hair. Major corporations pour billions into research and development for products that work on straight hair, wavy hair, hair that fits the European standard. But when it comes to the specific needs of black hair, the tight curls, the unique textures, the protective styles that are part of our culture, the innovation has been minimal at best. Black women have been told for decades to just deal with it, to accept that hair care is expensive and time-consuming, to be grateful that someone will even do our hair, 
to not ask for too much, to not expect the same level of innovation and convenience that the rest of the beauty industry takes for granted. Ogan B and Afa Lobby didn't accept that. They looked at an industry that hadn't innovated in 5,000 years and said no. We can do better, we will do better, our community deserves better. This is what happens when black engineers get the education, the resources, the platform, and the support to solve problems that matter to black people. We don't just participate in the innovation economy, we lead it, we transform it, we create solutions that nobody else even thought to look for. Ogon B specifically mentioned that she comes from a family of Nigerian engineers, and that cultural connection, that understanding of where braiding comes from, that respect for the 5,000-year-old African tradition that's baked into every single decision they made with this product. This isn't a Silicon Valley tech bro trying to disrupt an industry he doesn't understand. This is a black woman who has worn braids all her life, who knows the pain, who knows the cost, who knows the time commitment, who decided to use her engineering degree from Harvard to solve a problem that affects her community directly. And David Afalabi, her co-founder, brought his Harvard MBA expertise to help turn this engineering marvel into a real business, a scalable company a venture that could actually reach the millions of people who need it. Together, they represent something powerful. Black excellence in STEM, African heritage meeting American innovation, cultural authenticity combined with cutting-edge technology, and the kind of representation that shows young black kids that yes, you can be an engineer, yes, you can solve real problems, yes, you can build something that changes the world. The global hair braiding market is projected to surpass $625 million by 2032, and Halo Braid is positioning itself to capture a significant portion of that market. But this isn't just about money, it's about impact. Think about what this means for stylists. Instead of taking on four clients a week and destroying their hands in the process, they can now serve eight or 12 clients, double or triple their income, build sustainable businesses, hire employees, expand their salons, and do it all without chronic pain that ends careers before they should end. Think about what this means for clients. Instead of blocking out an entire Saturday and paying $300 for braids, you can get in and out in a fraction of the time at a more affordable price with the same professional quality you expect, making protective styling accessible to more people more often. Think about what this means for the culture. Braiding is not just a hairstyle, it's art, it's heritage, it's connection to our African roots, it's a way mothers bond with daughters, it's a way we express ourselves, it's a way we protect our hair and celebrate our beauty, and now that cultural practice can continue without the burden that's been attached to it for so long. Ogun B and Afalabi aren't trying to replace stylists. They're trying to empower them. The stylist still starts the braid, still brings their artistry, still makes the creative decisions, still connects with the client. But now they have a tool that handles the repetitive, time-consuming, physically demanding part of the process. It's like giving a construction worker a power drill instead of making them use a manual screwdriver. The skill is still there, the craftsmanship is still there, the human touch is still there, but the tool makes the work faster, easier, and more sustainable. And the machine learning aspect means the robot gets better over time. Every braid it completes teaches it something new, helps it understand different hair textures better, improves its speed, refines its technique. And the beauty of machine learning is that once one robot learns something, that knowledge can be shared across every robot in the network. Ogan B explained that their devices have done thousands of braids and braided full hairstyles like hers for the past year. And they use machine learning to match professional quality, but do it five times faster, five times faster. Let that sink in for a moment. That's not a small improvement. That's not a marginal gain. That's a complete transformation of the economics and the experience of hair braiding. The response from the black community has been overwhelmingly positive because people get it. We understand what this represents, we understand the struggle, we understand the need, we understand why this matters beyond just convenience or cost. This is about respect. Respect for our time, respect for our money, respect for the stylists who dedicate their lives to this craft. Respect for the 5,000-year-old African tradition that deserves the same level of technological advancement that every other industry has received, and it's about representation. When young black kids see Yinka Ogunbi and David Afalabi winning at Harvard, getting featured in major publications, building a real company that solves real problems, it expands what they think is possible for themselves. You can't be what you can't see. And now black kids can see themselves as robotics engineers, as inventors, as founders of companies that change industries, as people who don't just consume technology but create it. The journey to get here wasn't easy. Ogombi and Afalabi faced all the usual challenges that any startup faces. 
The technical difficulties, the funding challenges, the skepticism from people who didn't think it could be done, but they also face challenges that are specific to being black founders. Black entrepreneurs receive less than 2% of venture capital funding in America despite making up 13% of the population. They have to work twice as hard to get half as far. They have to prove themselves over and over again. They have to overcome biases that assume they're not as capable, not as serious, not as fundable as their white counterparts. But Ogunbi and Afalabi didn't let any of that stop them. They used the resources available at Harvard. They competed in pitch competitions, they won awards, they built prototypes, they tested relentlessly, they refined constantly. And they proved that when black innovators get even a fraction of the support they deserve, we can accomplish incredible things. The fact that they're now planning to open a pilot salon in Boston means this is really happening. This isn't some far-off future concept. This is technology that will be available to real stylists and real clients in real salons in the next few months. And the broader manufacturing rollout later this year means that by the end of 2025, Halo braid machines could be operating in salons across the country, changing the hair braiding experience for millions of people. Ogan B mentioned that she doesn't think Halo Braid would exist if they hadn't been at Harvard Business School and the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. The education, the mentorship, the network, the resources, all of it shaped every decision they made and helped them avoid mistakes or react quickly when mistakes happened. This is why representation in elite institutions matters. When black students get access to the same education, the same resources, the same networks as everyone else, we don't just succeed, we innovate, we create, we solve problems that have been ignored for far too long. David Afalabi added that the dynamism of being at Harvard Business School allows people to react to situations that evolve very quickly, and in a world where technology changes fast, being able to stay ahead of the curve has been extremely useful. But let's be real for a second. Harvard is great, the education is valuable, the network matters, but the real reason Halo Braid exists is because two black innovators of African descent cared enough about their community to spend 18 months building 450 prototypes to solve a problem that affects millions of black women. That's dedication, that's passion, that's cultural connection driving innovation in the most powerful way possible. As Halo Braid moves from pilot testing to full manufacturing, the implications extend beyond just hair braiding. This is proof that robotics and machine learning can be applied to tasks that people said were too complex, too delicate, too human to automate. If you can teach a robot to braid hair with all its complexity and variability, what else becomes possible? What other physically demanding, time-consuming tasks in the beauty industry could be transformed? What other cultural practices could be honored and elevated through technology? Ogon B and Afalabi aren't just building a product, they're opening a door, they're showing what's possible when black innovators combine cultural understanding with technical expertise, when African heritage meets American innovation, when the problems of our community become the focus of our engineering efforts. The waitlist on halobraid.com continues to grow, stylists continue to express interest, and the hair industry continues to pay attention because everyone knows what's coming. Halo Braid isn't just a cool invention, it's the beginning of a transformation. It's the first crack in a 5,000-year-old status quo. It's proof that the future of beauty technology can be inclusive, culturally relevant, and designed by and for the communities it serves. This is black innovation at its finest. Identifying a real problem, applying world-class engineering to solve it, building something that actually works, bringing it to market in a way that empowers rather than replaces human expertise, and doing it all while honoring the cultural significance of the practice. Yinka Ogunbi and David Afalabi aren't just inventors, they're pioneers, they're proof that when we invest in black excellence, when we support black entrepreneurs, when we believe in black innovation, we get solutions that change lives and transform industries. The next time someone tells you that certain problems can't be solved, that certain tasks are too complex for automation, that certain industries are just the way they are and always will be, remember Halo Braid. So now we're excited to realize our mission of saving billions of hours spent braiding hair each year and transform an industry that hasn't changed in thousands of years. Thank you. Remember that two young black innovators of African descent looked at 5,000 years of unchanged tradition and said we can make this better, and then they actually did it. If you want to follow this journey and see where Halo Braid goes from here, make sure you're subscribed because this story is just getting started.